Jesus. You're an awesome, mighty God, sovereign and holy. There's no one like you in all the earth, O oh God. All the earth shall worship you, sing praise to your name, O oh Most High. Hallelujah. To God be praised. To God be praised. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You're truly worthy, King Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth, O oh God. Our souls make it boast in you, Lord God. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. You are worthy. Good evening, Dennis. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, that are the master under the Kashiki and the Oko Sandara Rabaste. God, we worship you, we magnify you, we praise you, Lamb of God. You are worthy, King Jesus. You are the risen King, Sovereign Lord, your Holy Lord God. You are worthy, you are so worthy, Lord God. You're the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and the ending. You are the living word. You're omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent, God. You're all powerful. You know everything, God. You're everywhere at the same time. God, we magnify you today. We put a praise on circumstances, situations, God. You are worthy, God, to bring us through every trial, every test. Every situation, victorious God, we worship you, we magnify you, we exalt your name, O oh God. Your word tells us, Father, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. God, I magnify you right now, God. I make you bigger, God, than anything that comes against us, God, because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. <coughs> Thank you, Father God, for the victory in Christ Jesus. You are the greater one, God, who lives in us. We're strong in the Lord and the power of his might, God. We thank you. We praise you, Lord God, that we're overcomers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You rule, you reign, you have dominion and authority, God. There's no one like you in all the earth, oh God. Your words is all the earth shall worship thee and sing praises to thy name, O Most High. God, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you, God. You're the same God who opened blinded eyes, unstopped deaf ears, called the lame to leap with joy. You're the same God who called the sun to rise in the morning and to set in the evening, God. You're the same God put the moon and the stars in the sky at night, oh God, to glisten your glory, God, in the atmosphere. God, you're the same God. We worship you, King Jesus. We magnify, we praise you, Lord God. For all the earth belongs to you, God, all creation. You created was good and very good. God, we magnify you. We exalt your name, oh God. We worship you, King Jesus. You reign forevermore. You're sovereign and you're holy, Lord God. Father, we thank you. We praise your awesome name, oh God. Lord, I come before your awesome presence, God, right now, saying thank you for another opportunity, oh God, to share your word. I ask, Father God, right now that you be glorified in the midst, O oh God. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding. 
to release the revelation from the Spirit of living God. A word, Father, that would challenge, that would provoke, that would edify, that would encourage, that would build up, that would bring conviction. Change our lives and our hearts forever, God. Blow our minds, Jesus. Change our minds tonight, oh God. Change our attitudes. Cause us, Father, to stand fast and liberty Christ made us free. Because the greatest he that's in us and he that's in the world. You are the rock of our salvation. Our God whom we can trust and depend on. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are our victory, God. As that you be glorified on tonight, oh God, let no flesh glory in your presence. But let you have dominion and authority in the midst, oh God, that everything we do, we do to the glory of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Hopefully others will come on tonight. If not, I'm still going to continue to teach the word anyway. Uh, many times I taught by myself on this line when no one was on but myself. But I pray that this word will impact the lives of those who hear this word and help provoke them to righteousness and change their lives forever by the spirit of a living God. Amen. 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 God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Amen. I don't know why this thing keep kicking me out on my phone. Um, tonight, we're going to continue in the book that we talked about, the uh, Battlefield of the Mind. The Battlefield of the Mind. And that's one thing that I really believe in, that we're in a spiritual war. Every day is a battle. Every day is, is a, is a uh, challenge to live right. Every day we're going through something in our lives that we have to depend on God to make it through. God bless you, Otis. God bless you. And one thing about the bait of Satan, anything that's a bait is something to lure you or to entrap you. And one thing about the word bait, we use a bait to trap animals. You get squirrels in your house, raccoons in your house. You use a trap. You put bait in that trap, and it will entice the critter to be drawn to that, that trap. And the bait is what draws them into the trap. And once they engage into the trap, they're snared, they're caught, and they can't get out. The word bait in the verb aspect is to deliberately annoy or taunt someone. To deliberately annoy and taunt someone. And we, we, we can attest to that in today's time that people do things sometimes to aggravate you. Sometimes they do things just to irritate you. To just provoke you. To, to anger. To cause you to get out of character. To persecute you. To slander you. To make you uptight and upset. But the spirit of living God. One of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. And as a child of God, we are ordered by the Lord Jesus Christ himself to demonstrate the love of Christ, to live in the love of Christ, to buy the love of Christ, and to share that same love that he poured towards you to somebody else who may be unlovable. So I want to read tonight a devotion before I go into the lesson. It's from the book, More of You, God, More of You, God. It's a devotional, a two-year devotional. And day 28 for June, it says, Jesus, there isn't any other place I would rather be than in your presence. Today, I just want to reverence you, Father. I just want to be in your arms. Here in your arms, I have peace, joy, contentment, relief, and love. Lord, I can't rest comfortably without a lot of chaos going on inside of my head. This place is a place I'm not relying on what the world is dictating to me. It is where truth is spoken. I rely on your word, Father, to mandate my future. If you said it, it shall come to pass. All I have to do is rest in you and trust in you, Lord. Lord, I thank you because I trust you. Father, you are unchanging. My faith gets stronger, and I go to unheard places with more of you, God. That is so awesome. That's profound devotional for the day. 
to remind us that there is no better place to be than in the presence of the Lord, to camp out in his presence, to settle in his presence, knowing that he invites you into his presence in his loving arms to embrace you and to keep you secure in his presence. Then no matter what you go through in this life, you can always find yourself resting in the presence of the Lord. That's amazing. That is amazing to know that I can rest in his presence every day. Amen. So as we go into our lesson tonight, it talks about the bait of Satan. And one thing about the bait of Satan, we all, we, we talked about last week in our um, introduction, introduction about offense. The bait that Satan used the most against a child of God is offense. And he gets you to the place where it lacks genuine love. It gets you puffed up in knowledge. It gets you selfish, self-righteous, holding on to pride, hurting other people with your words, being offense to somebody, offense to God by the actions of life we live. We have to take a personal examination every day to find out what is it that I'm allowing the enemy to entice me with to lure me from the plan and the purpose God has for my life. One thing about the bait of Satan, this book is so profound because it talks about so many different types of things that God does in our lives by the Spirit of living God when we trust in him. When we stand fast and live to Christ made us free, you find yourself being enriched by the promises that's in God's word. He used the story of a marriage that was... Uh, about to go through divorce and how this man read the book of Satan. I mean, not book of Satan. Yeah, the bait of Satan, read the bait of Satan. And this book was liberating to save this marriage. And one thing about, about God's word, God's word has the solution to every problem that we face. Jesus did many different miracles and all the miracles are not written in the book of the, of the Bible. If they were, they wouldn't even fit in the Bible because so many things he'd done that they couldn't even keep track of. But one thing about God's word, it illuminates, it empowers, it strengthens, it encourages you to keep holding on to God's hand, standing on this word of truth. Because in Christ, we're overcomers and we're victorious. And, and tonight we want to go into the introduction of the book. We talked about the uh, prefix last week. The introduction says, anyone who has trapped animals knows a trap needs one of two things to be successful. It must be hidden in the hope that the animal will stumble upon it. It must be baited to lure the animal into the trap, the deadly jaws. And that's one thing the enemy does. He doesn't come to you as a child of God and makes his bait hidden or obscure, but he sets something that's delightful, something that's pleasant to the eyes to draw your attention, something that's going to cause you to get into the place in yourself to find yourself luring off the pathway of righteousness onto the pathway of unrighteousness and wickedness. He knows what it takes to appease your appetite. So that's the things he does. He presents things to you that are familiar, the things that you are acquainted with, even send people in your life, in your life that, are, that, that once walked with you, that knows your ups and your downs, that knows the secrets of your heart. It knows what you love the most. And those people are the ones that the enemy uses many times to entice you to get off the pathway. Satan, the enemy of our souls, incorporates both of these strategies as he lays out the most deceptive and deadly trap. They are both hidden and baited. So he hides the trap, but the baits are visible. Because he knows, unless I can put something before you to captivate your attention, you never follow after him. 
Satan along with his cohorts is not as blatant as many believe as many believe. He is subtle and delights in deception. He is shrewd in his operation, cunning and crafty. You know a person who's a manipulator. You may know a person who's a thief. And the very tool they use to get your attention is a lie. And they make the lie so convincing to where that lie sounds like truth. And so they get your attention, captivate you with their lies and deception, all with the mindset of the trap to, de to steal from you or destroy what you have. The enemy does the same thing. He's cunning and he's crafty. It's like in the Garden of Eden. We always refer back to Adam and Eve in the garden where Satan was the most subtle creature in the garden. And the enemy infiltrated the, the, the serpent's body and began to speak to Eve in the garden, which enticed her, baited her to turn from God's word from being obedient to what he had given them, divine order, what not to do and what they can do. So she ate her forbidden tree of good and evil, which caused their eyes to become open, and they became naked. And because of that, sin is into the world, and all became sinners. But thank God for Jesus Christ, because through Jesus Christ, all became righteous. And that's what God wants us to know tonight, my brother, my sister, that it doesn't matter how many traps and baits Satan uses against you. If you stay under the coverts of God's wings, his protection, God promises he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll always be there for you to lead God and direct you in the way of truth and the way of righteousness. Don't forget he can disguise himself as a messenger of light. That right there captivated my attention. It made me think about the body of Christ because Jesus taught his disciples that there are many wolves and sheep clothing in the body of Christ. There are many people in the body of Christ who appear to be of God, but they're spies for the enemy. They're Satan's agents, his secret service, sitting in the background, disguised as a child of God. But all the time, he's seeking and searching in the body of Christ who he can devour. If you're not careful, just like a fish, when you go fishing, you go to the ocean or the sea, wherever you go to fish, the lake, you take your fishing gear, you take your line, your reel, you bait it with the right type of bait to catch the right kind of fish, and you launch it into the deeps of the water or the depths of the water. And once it goes deep in the water, the fish that is attracted to that type of bait is lured to that bait. And that fish comes along, grabs the bait, <coughs> not knowing it's a trap with a hook. And once they bite that bait, the hook gets caught in their mouth. Now the fish has been trapped, ensnared. Some fish are so crafty, so strong, even they do get hooked on the, on the hook, trapped on the hook, they know how to wiggle themselves off of the hook. But then there are some who are not as strong as the others who are, are easily entrapped and ensnared and caught by the predator. In the body of Christ, it's the same way. Many people are trapped, ensnared, by the enemy, his hook, his trap, his case, because there's a cage that the enemy sets for you. Just like a prison. You get locked in that prison. You can't get out of it. Many people in the body of Christ, their hearts are locked inside of a spiritual trap that the enemy set before them in a cage. 
and they try to finagle, try to wiggle, try to push, try to force, try to squeeze their way out of it. And they find themselves just being tired and frustrated and can't get out of it. And the more they press against it, the more frustration is produced. Lack of peace, anger, bitterness, misery, sorrow of the heart, to where now you begin to gnash out at other people. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, Second Timothy chapter three, beginning verse one. And it says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despise of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Then it goes on, it says, having a form of, of godliness having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away there are so many people you look in the news you look in society many of these these attributes that were mentioned here of the flesh you find them being exercised in society today. In marriages, in relationships, in churches, in our communities. Because many have turned from the truth to a lie. And God says that in the last days, wickedness, shall become more rapid, shall abound even more. Lawlessness will increase because of the heart of the people have become lovers of themselves and not lovers of God. And he said the people that do all these different things mentioned here turn away from them. Don't entertain them. You entertain a fool you become a fool. You hang around a liar long enough, you become a liar. Why? Because of the spirit is transferred to the weak. If you're not strong enough to stand up against a thief, a liar, an adulterer, a whoremonger, a backbiter, a hater, every person that's of wickedness, it's going to bait you to fall into the same type of mindset and become an offense to God. If we are not trained by the word of God to divide right between good and evil, we won't recognize his traps for what they are. If you're not trained to recognize the enemy's traps, you'll find yourself always being a snare by your own word. One of the most deceptive and insidious kinds of baits is something every Christian has encountered called offense. Actually, offense itself is not deadly if it stays in the trap. But if we pick it up and consume it and feed on it in our hearts, then we become offended. Offended people produce much fruit such as hurt, anger, outrage, jealousy, resentment, strife, bitterness, hatred, and envy. Some of the consequences of picking up an offense are insults, attacks, woundings, division, separation, broken relationships, betrayal, and backsliding. Often those who offended 
do these, often those who are offended do not even realize they are trapped. Isn't that something? We can become so separated from God in our mindsets. So when the enemy comes before you with darkness, you think you're still in light. And that's something. The enemy puts darkness before you. You think that darkness is light. But all the time, you're still in trap. You've been deceived by the enemy to see something that's not of God to make it look like it's from God. Offended people produce much fruit. I'm going to read it again. Produce the fruit of hurt. So if I'm hurt, I'm going to hurt you. I get angry, come outrageous, <coughs> don't care who I offend with my words, don't care how I talk to you, don't, don't care how I mistreat you. I become jealous, resentful of who you are. Why God always seemed to bless you, never bless me? <clears throat> how come the life I live, I try to do everything right and everything keep going wrong? So I get strife in my heart. I get bitterness and hatred and envy. All because I allow myself to be entrapped by the enemy in my mind. You already said, entrapped in the mind. Often those who are offended do not even realize they are trapped. They are, they are oblivious to their condition. Oblivious means you're not even aware of your condition. You don't pay attention to your condition. Because they are so focused on wrong that it was that was done to them. I become oblivious to my condition because all I see is the wrong that people did to me. I don't see anything else. All I see is the pain and the hurt that someone inflicted upon me. So in my mind, I need to get even. So I deny the truth. So they are in denial. So we deny that I'm entrapped by the enemy because in my mind, I think I'm still free. The most effective way for the enemy to blind us is to cause us to focus on ourselves. The enemy knows if I can get you to see everything about you and not about God, I can entrap you and keep you stuck in a dark place. I'm absent of the light of God. So all I see is destruction. All I see is gloom and doom. All I see is the sorrows of the heart. I never see myself arising out of where I'm at. All I see is myself, I'm stuck in the pitfall of despair. And I can't rise out of it. And God wants you to know tonight that you are greater than what you think you are in Christ Jesus. He has the power, he has the ability to bring you out of your situation, no matter how difficult it becomes. The problem comes in, the situation is really not as bad as we make it appear to be. The word tells us, David wrote one of the Psalms, so oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us <laughs> exalt his name together. Why? Because if I look at God in every situation, I see him already bringing me out of it. I see myself having the greater one living inside of me, so I'm greater in Christ Jesus because he already defeated the situation. So in other words, we have to redirect our focus. I talked about this before. We have to redirect our focus from always seeing the bad stuff in my life and see the good things that God has done for me. How he kept my children out of jail. How he kept on hearing me when I got sick. How he never let me have an accident in my car. How he always protected me from danger seeing and unseen. When someone else got shot around me, he protected me from being killed. We got to always try to see the good in God in every situation, and God will show you himself how he is bringing you through things victoriously. Glory to God. 
This book exposes this deadly trap and reveals how to escape its grips and stay free from it. Freedom from offense is essential for every Christian because Jesus said it is impossible to live in this life and not have the opportunity to be offended. So, in other words, in this life, we're going to be offended. You can't get around it. It's all part of life. It's part of the troubles, the trials, the temptations, the tests, the relationships, the people we meet. Somebody's going to offend you. You might be walking down the street. This happens to me quite often. You speak to someone, good morning or hello, they frown at you as if you just offended them. And in response, I say, God bless you. Because I don't say something God wants me to say, my flesh is going to rise up and I become offended. Who they think they is frowning at me? All I said was good morning. Or I said hello. That wasn't even called for. How many times have you done that? How many times have you allowed yourself to say something that you know you shouldn't have said to somebody else because they made you mad? Or they stepped on your toes? Or they responded to you the wrong way you expected them to speak to you? We have to get within ourselves the acknowledgement of the Holy Spirit inside of us who gives us self-control. We don't have the right to offend anybody with negativity. If you hang around negative people, you become negative. If I hang around positive people, I become positive. I was taught by a bishop years ago. This bishop said to me, and he spoke in the church, and he says, you want to prosper? Hang around prosperous people. He said, because the anointing on the people around you who are prosperous, it'll trickle down to you and cause you to prosper. And you know what? It's a true statement. Because if I hang around people who got it going on, who are successful, that same spirit gets into my mindset to make me believe myself to be successful. I may never have what they have, but what I do have, I'm comfortable with what I have, and I'm successful in what I have. And I strive every day to become better and better and more successful in the things of God which cause my natural man to prosper. You I just said, your key to success being successful in God. When I'm successful in God, God calls me to prosper. The enemy wants to deceive you to make you think you'll never be prosperous. You'll never get out of debt. you always have these bills lingering over your head like a dark cloud. Bill collectors ringing your phone every day, threatening evictions or threatening to turn off your lights. You're going to always be in this rut of life. That's what the enemy wants you to think. But my Bible tells me, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. You know what that means? If I seek God first, the kingdom of God, which is God's dominion, his authority, his prosperity, his promises, seeking the kingdom and his righteousness by remaining in right standing with God. The more I practice righteousness, I be in right standing with God every day of my life as I seek him first. These and all these things shall be added unto you. What does you need God to do? What is it? Think about it. What is it you need God to do for you. God says when you put him first, he'll provide what you need as Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, that means the Lord blesses and provides. So if God promises to show up in your situation as Jehovah Jireh, it's a guarantee he's going to meet your every need. 
But in Luke chapter 17, verse 1, then said he unto his disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him, beware, through whom they come. Are you the one carrying offenses? Or is somebody else you know carrying offenses? He said, woe to whom to him whom they come. So you got to be careful who you entertain. Because offensive people that are sitting on the sideline waiting for the moment of vulnerability to enter into your heart, to offend you, to cause you to be tested in your character to cause you to be tested in your, in your integrity to God. So Jesus told his disciples, woe unto him to whom they come. So when offense comes, you don't need to be reactive. You need to be proactive. Stay in your word. Keep praying and seeking God's face. Consecrating. That's being proactive. So when those things does come present itself before me, I already set myself up for God's presence to be a shield before me. God says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to find safety. So if God is a strong tower, he said, righteous run to find safety, guess what? You already set yourself up by consecration for him to be your defense. So God himself said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. So God promises to defend you of your adversary. Only if you give him the power and the authority to do it. Glory to God. In churches across America and in other nations where I've preached this message, over 50% of the people have responded to the altar call. Although this is a high response, it is still not, every, not everyone. Pride holds some people back from responding. I've seen people healed, set free, filled the Holy Spirit, and receive answers to prayers when they release when they are released from his trap. So when you allow God to deliver you from the bait, the bait of Satan from the trap, you'll be set free. You can be healed. You can be delivered. You can be empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit in your heart. When you let the Holy Spirit come in, the Holy Spirit himself will protect God and keep you with the word of God. The only defense we have against the enemy, the same way Jesus defeated the enemy in, in the wilderness, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he went to bow down to pray for the last time before going to the cross, was the word of God. We have to recognize when the enemy comes that the only way I'm going to rise above the attack and the traps and the snares of the enemy is by speaking, confessing, memorizing the word of God. In the last part of the 20th century, knowledge has greatly increased in the church. But e even with this increase, it seems we have experienced more division among believers, leaders, and congregation. The reason offense is rampant from a lack of genuine love. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. Knowledge puffs up, but the love of Christ edifies. In other words, it gives you a revelation. It gives you insight of the heart of God for yourself on how to deal with offenses. And, and this is a true statement. It increased in the body of Christ, the vision among believers and leaders of the congregation because offense. We come offensive because I don't like the way the pastor preach. And we come offensive on the way he counsels. I don't like the way he counsels me. And we come offensive. I don't like the way people looked at me. I don't, I don't like the way they greeted me at the door. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like that in the church. So I get offended. So many are snared in this deceptive trap that we almost come to believe it is the normal way of life. That's a sad mentality, a demonic mentality. 
when you become so ensnared so much to where it becomes a normal way of life to you in your mindset. I was watching Spider-Man, the last one that just came out. I forgot, I think it's Spider-Man in the multiverse or something. And, um, and one thing about it, this young lady in this movie, she said, if you expect, if you expect disappointment, you'll never be disappointed. And that's a true statement, but it's not godly. Because why would I always get into the mindset of expecting disappointment? Which caused me to accept failure. It caused me to get into the mindset of defeat. Because I'm already setting myself up with the attitude, if I'm going to be offended, I might as well just receive offense because I'm always be offended. It's going to be the normal way of life. So which puts me in the mindset where I'm always attacking people. So I'm going to attack people the way they come at me, or I'm going to get them first. If I know somebody is about to say something to me, and it's going to be offensive to me, I'm going to attack them first, so I won't be harmed by them, so I hurt them first. Hurt people hurt people. And the more I hurt one another, the more Christ is being pushed to the side. And God says, that we are to get to the place in our hearts where allow the Holy Spirit to heal and deliver and set us free from the spirit of offense. Offense is a spirit. It's an ugly spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Because that same spirit could cause somebody to be killed. You see it in the news. Husband killing their wives. The wives killing the husband. Killing the boyfriend. Boyfriend killing the children. Because I'm offended. You left with your children. And God is making us aware through this book, The Bait of Satan, that if you're not careful, your life is slowly being sucked out of you by the enemy. Before the return of Christ, however, true believers will be, re will, will be united unlike anything in the past. I believe that today, countless men and women will be released from this trap of offense. This will be one of the main links to seeing a revival sweep across this nation. When Christ gets ready to come back, there's going to be a band of believers who have not compromised, who have not get, given in to the, the enemy's traps, who have not fallen to the snares, who have not lured into enticement of the world, their vices and their appetites. But they consecrated themselves. They stood the test of time as the remnant of Christ to allow Christ to be revealed in their lives to set many people free. Then we said, I'll break a revival. And that's what's missing in today's time is a, a worldwide wide revival. We need a worldwide revival. Because this gospel, it has to be preached worldwide. That many people can come out of the trap of the enemy. I, I was looking at a documentary earlier concerning these Kia boys who made themselves known nationally. How they're going around stealing Kias and Hondas. They're going around stealing these cars and they're boasting about it and they're bragging on what they do and even the danger they hurt when they hurt other people, even how they destroy the other vehicles, all these things. And they, they steal your car by using the charger in that you plug into your, your, your uh, charger on the wall. The, the USB part that goes to your charger, plug into the wall, is a part they use to steal your car. And they boast about it. And they said before this year is out, it's going to be a bloody year because they're going to destroy many people's lives. They're already plotting and planning for your demise. And God is making us aware that as children of God, we got to come back together and pray and pray and pray until we see a change in our nation. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then when I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land, our land is in need of healing. And it's not going to take place until the people of God is united in one accord all around the country. Unbelievers will behold Jesus. The unbelievers will behold Jesus through our love for one another. 
where they have been blinded to him before. So when Christ gets ready to come back, there are going to be many people who are unbelievers are going to be, their eyes are going to be open to receive Jesus. I do not believe in writing this book just to, just to write one. God has burned this message, into my, this message into my heart. And I have seen its fruits remain. One pastor said to me after the, a service in which this message was preached, I have never seen so many set free at one time. God has spoken to my heart that this is the only, only the beginning. Many will be set free, healed, and restored as they read this book and obey the Spirit's prompting to them. I am believing as you read the words on these pages that the teacher and the counselor will apply them personally to you. He's talking about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. As he does, this revealed word will bring a great liberty to your life and your ministry. So the author of this book says this is just the beginning. And even since this book has been written, thousands of books have been sold out worldwide. And people are preaching this book all around the country. And lives are being set free from the words that are written in this book. So let's pray together as you begin. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to re that you will reveal by your spirit your word to me as I read this book. Expose any hidden area of my heart at, that have hindered me from knowing you and serving you more effectively. I welcome the conviction of your Holy Spirit and ask you your grace to carry out what you desire of me in my heart. May I come to know you more intimately as a result of hearing your voice through reading this book. So as we begin to go into this book, I just read the prefix and went through the introduction tonight. And next week we'll start in chapter one of the book, The Bait of Satan, Living Free from Deadly Traps of Offense. The Bait of Satan, Living Free from the Deadly Traps of Offense. So as we go through this book, have an open heart and an open mind to receive the revelation from this book that will make you more aware and discern the spirits of the enemy that will come to you through many different avenues to entrap you. That you be on guard by the spirit of the living God to stand firm in your conviction and your faith in Jesus Christ and not be turned aside to follow after any other doctrine or any other God but serve the true and living God wholeheartedly. And I guarantee you find yourself being set free by the power of the living God from the reading of this book. I tell you, God is so good. I love teaching this word. This word is refreshing to my spirit every time I read it, every time I even um, minister from these books God has given me. I pray that it's setting you free in your heart. So I want to post tonight, if you want to sow a seed into the ministry, feel free to do so. And I tell you, when you sow your seed, trust God. Also, go to my YouTube channel. Every lesson that I teach, I place on my YouTube channel. I take my time. I download these videos. I edit these videos. I put on YouTube for me to see these videos and hear this word from God that God has given me. So the Bible says a labor is worthy of his hire. So every time I do what God is struggling to do, God said I'm going to be blessed by my obedience. So I ask you to sow a seed into the ministry and trust God that when you sow your seed, that God is going to restore back unto you a hundredfold blessing plus. And I speak blessings and favor over you in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want you to pray this prayer to me tonight as we get ready to close. Heavenly Father, I should come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and wash me in the blood of the Lamb, cleanse my mind, cleanse my heart, restore me into right standing and right relationship with you through your son, Jesus Christ. Now come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. Now, Lord God, fill me with the Holy Spirit and with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
If you prayed that prayer and you meant that, you've been restored tonight, you've been born again the first time, welcome to the family of God. And I guarantee the angels in heaven are rejoicing over one sinner who made a decision to give their life to Christ. And I tell you the truth, that every blessing that God has in store for you, every promise God has for you, he will fulfill according to his word. Stay in the word of God. Every day, meditate on the word of God. Let the word be in your heart, in your mouth, the word of faith that we preach. Allow the word to manifest inside of you. That the word will begin to produce fruit in your heart, your mind, and in your spirit. And I tell you that when you do that, God will bless you tremendously. May the Lord bless thee and keep ye. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his counsels upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shalom. Have a good night. Share this video with someone else. And allow God to minister to you continually that you will grow in grace and in the knowledge of who he is. If you have any questions, inbox me your questions. And I'll answer those questions in the next class. Feel free to inbox me your questions. If you have any, any comments you want to make or any, anything you want to share, any subjects you want me to discuss, feel free to inbox me. I don't mind uh, other people giving me feedback because it helps me grow. And if I'm doing something wrong and if you don't understand something, let me know it. And I tell you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God will give you the answers to share with you as we study and grow in the Word of God together. You all have a great and a blessed night. Until next week, Lord and Sister the same, 6 o'clock hour. We'll be back again on Tuesday. Have a good night.